Hi, and welcome to Soul Care Podcast. We are so glad you're here with us today. I'm Kimberly Willis. And I am Jinder Reinick. We are joined by our soul care expert, Warren Lamb. Hi, glad to be here. We are here to talk about soul care, what it means, what it looks like, and the hope it can offer. Our desire with this podcast is to offer hope for battling some of the greatest struggles we face as humans, and to do so with love, kindness, grace, and prayer. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and join us for this journey into the world of biblical soul care. Let's get started. Hi, welcome today on the Soul Care Podcast. We will be discussing whole person ministry which is part of the basic approach to biblical counseling and soul care that is distinctive of truth and love biblical counseling. This is a class that we offer as part of our certification process and it's unique to TILBCC. It's a very interesting topic that explores the foundation of what we believe and how these foundational beliefs directly impact the paradigm through which we view life and our purpose, our worth, our value, and ultimately, our ability to heal. Warren, you're our guest speaker today. And since this class was developed by you, um, so as always, first, we want to thank you in advance for sharing your wisdom and guidance. And, you know, just to kind of kick things off, can you just summarize what the course covers? Yeah. um, Let's see. How's the best way to summarize it? This, This course is a combination of rich theology, some rich, important philosophy, and very practical, what we call anthropology. So we're looking at, because the biggest questions every human asks is, who am I? Where do I come from? What, why am I here? What is the point of all this? So understanding who we are as human beings, where we came from, why we are made the way we are, and looking at it through the view perspective of God and scripture is a key part of this. We talk about the impact of the, the rebellion or the fall, as it's called, in Genesis 3. Um, we really dig deep into the Imago Dei, the image of God, and its implications for life and counseling, of course. We also bring in theology of food, biblical nutrition. We talk about the synergistic whole that we are. We are material. We are immaterial. We are body. We are mind, soul, spirit. We are those things. Um, we talk about the, the microbiome and the gut-brain connection. We talk about cellular health. We talk about the impact of medications, uh, particularly psychotropics. Um, we talk about the interplay between physical health, spiritual well-being. We talk about uh, very practical approaches to helping integrate uh, health considerations into biblical counseling. We even get into some of the theological discussions they're important that don't seem like at the beginning is what about the human soul? What is it? Where does it come from? When do we get it? Right. We don't seem like, well, who cares? But your response to that, that particular question has incredible ramifications. So all of these things are things we try to cover. It's 10 weeks. So we cover it pretty intensely, I guess would be the word, but that would be the summary, I guess. Okay. So how does it, this, our program, the TIBC whole person ministry approach differ from traditional biblical counseling models. We really try to bring the balance of the material and immaterial of the person into the conversation. The scripture is, is full of, of language. It talks about how what impacts us emotionally, mentally impacts us physically and vice versa. Uh, especially the Psalms are rich in describing the physiological impact of depression or anxiety or worry or fear, loss, all of those things impact us not just emotionally and spiritually, but also physically. Um, and we, we all know that intuitively. Let's say you, you've got an appointment that you're a little hesitant to and you get butterflies in your stomach. <laughs> That's your gut tell, and your brain communicating, say, hey, we need to be, <laughs> we need to be on guard here, right? So we take those things for granted. Uh, normally what we want to do is in this module is we want to say, okay, we need to understand that whatever's happening in this person's heart, mind, and soul is also occurring in their body. Right now, the lingo in the biblical counseling world is we're embodied souls and ensouled bodies. I think that's 
you know, it's already a little bit cliche, um, but understanding that we are synergistic holes between the material and the immaterial. We are those things. We don't have those things. And I think that's the number one. And we train our counselors to pay attention. What's going on with this person physically? What about their diet? What about their rest? What about their movement? All of these things are, inter, inter, are interwoven with their thoughts, their emotions, their heart, all of that. And are you saying, sorry, just want to make sure that I was clear. Are you saying that this is, this differs because there's not usually a class in, for biblical certification that trains you on how to examine these things for counseling? I've looked at the exams from the other organizations and I don't see any questions about this on their exams that may be changing. But the last time I looked, I didn't see anything. There are some uh, accredited degree programs that will touch on these things. It's not an also ran. We bring it in from the, from the very beginning. Like I sit down with somebody who says, has been diagnosed with a depression, either by a medical profession or, or Google, either one. And <laughs> so one, one of the things I'm going to ask them about is, so talk to me about what your what a normal day, a normal week looks like for you. And what I'm listening for is what kind of meals do they eat? What kind of food are they putting in their body? And what is their rest like? And what kind of activity do they have? Right. Because one of the things we know is that, um, we, we can talk about this more later, but gut health is critical to overall well-being. 80% of our overall well-being is determined by our gut health. And so people that aren't eating foods that contribute to a healthy gut are going to be more inclined and be impacted more deeply by depression, anxiety, and those types of things. It doesn't, the, the gut health problem doesn't cause those things, but sure can be a catalyst and an exacerbate those problems. So wait, are you saying that Google is not a medical professional? It really isn't. It really <laughs> isn't. I know, I know a lot of people are probably going to get emails or letters. <laughs> Nobody sends letters anymore. <laughs> so what, what le I know, you know, we kind of are asking a lot of questions about the content of the class, but did something, has this always been something that you've examined with counselees or did it, an event happen where you started realizing the correlation between the, you know, all of these attributes of someone's life, of someone's life contributing to their spiritual state as well? Did, like, was there an event that happened or kind of what, how did you develop, come to the conclusion that we needed it's this? something that's always been a part of my knowledge base. I mean, it's always been, so it's always been something I brought into counseling or, you know, martial arts training or whatever. I was surprised to find out that it wasn't a normal part of the conversation and counseling conversations until I started being around other biblical counselors. And it's like, they're not talking about this. They're not even really asking questions. Or if they do, if they ask about, you know, medical history and things like that, they don't really look at it and, and say, okay, there's information here that, and I'm not saying that's everybody, but a lot of people look at that and it's like, they don't even, can't even make head or tails out of it or don't know what to do with it. And a lot of times what I've heard from people is, well, I'm not a medical professional. That's not my niche. You're supposed to be ministering to the whole person. So get educated, learn these things. Are counselees well, surprised when you start, oh, sorry, Kimmy, are counselees well, surprised when you start asking questions about this? I mean, cause I think I would be, if you start going to someone for biblical counseling and they're like, oh, tell me about your diet <laughs> and your well, physical activity and et cetera. But I, I, I lead into it by saying, look, we are synergistic holes. I use that language. So what impacts us, one aspect of our makeup impacts the other aspects of our makeup. So we're going to talk about all of that because all of those things matter. And you may not even understand how much they matter until we start talking through them and looking at them a little more closely. And a lot of people are really encouraged by that. Some people are like, I don't want to talk to you about my food. Okay, well, that means we probably need to, don't you think? Well, what I think is um, uh, really interesting is even if you just, any kind of medical profession, most doctors, or even if you're going to go to secular type psychology, they're not going to talk about food ever. They're not going to really, I just feel like in the last couple of years, gut and brain health information has been coming out and how um, important that is 
uh, especially in kids, adult, you know, all these different things. So I think it's pretty exciting that it's always been a part of TIL. Well, it's interesting that my wife and I, you, I used to help her teach a health and nutrition course for people to, to get healthier. And so all of these things that we talk about in our module were things that we were helping teach other people. But of course, we're tying it in with we talk about the theology of food. Um, I mean, that's a whole topic by itself. And people go, theology of food? I've never heard of that. Okay, well, let's let's talk about it because we really do need to. Just something simple. Like when you take a look at the correlation between the presence of food in Scripture and talking about the Imago Dei and, the, and being human, they're interrelated from the very first chapter. Everybody focuses on, you know, created man in his image, male and female, he created them. But the very next verse, he says, Behold, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth. Every tree that has fruit yielding seed, it shall be food for you. Eat to your heart's content. Just don't eat that over there. And all through scripture, we see it in Genesis 9 after Noah and his family come off the ark. From this point forward, you're going to be eating meat. Don't eat the blood in it. He says, you're not just going to eat plants, but now you're going to eat meat as well. And he, and he ties that in with the shedding of blood because the, the life is in the blood. And then right after that, the very next verse, he says, whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood will be shed. For in the image of God, he made man. You see this food and in interrelation between food and the image of God. Think about this. Humanity's fall occurred around food. What did they do? They ate the forbidden fruit, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, there's food here. The curse involves getting food. And you look at all of the redemptive milestones throughout throughout God's history with his people. You got the Passover meal to the Lord's Supper, right? The promised land is described as a land flowing with milk and honey. To be consecrated to God in ancient Israel what it was symbolized by Jewish dietary laws. I mean, I could go on and on and on. And you got all the way down to the final final scene, which is the wedding feast of the, the lamb. So food is a critical part of our existence as human beings, and yet we don't really talk about it much. How does that manifest in the, a counseling conversation with someone? Are you saying or suggesting that we can sometimes have a, I don't want to say wrong, maybe that's not the appropriate word, but um, we can, I mean, thinking of like, eat till your heart's content, I can see how that could be interpreted <laughs> very literally um, and could lead you down a path potentially of an eating habit. Or well, an I understand habit. that that was pre-fall, that was pre-lust, right. that was pre-fallen passions and desires Correct. and things. But, Correct. but even think about this, whether you eat or drink, to the glory, even in the mundane of eating and drinking, we reflect God's glory. Yeah, it's about being wise and a good steward of that because mm -hmm. we counsel a lot of people who have a really broken relationship with food. They struggle with what we call disordered eating. We don't use the eating disorder language, we use disordered eating. Their eating is out of order. So the relationship with food is broken, and there's a reason for that. So we want to address the relationship with food, but we want to address why it's broken. How did it get broken and how do we remedy that? So many cases I can tell you, and we don't say, okay, you got to cut out all sugar. You got to go through your pantry and you got to get rid of everything that's in a box or a can or is processed. No, we start off with, I tell you what, for the next couple of weeks, two or three times a week, let's try having you add leafy greens to, to one meal, two or three times a week. Right? Because that's going to start helping with your, your gut health. That's going to start helping your body draw nutrients out of food. Just something that simple, simple can start making a difference. And we start there. We don't start with take this out of your diet. We start by adding, let's add this healthy thing. How, how do you see some of these changes when it comes to the approach to the whole person um, lead to, or do you see them lead to, better results for lack of a better word or more receptive the people are more receptive to the counseling like do you see a correlation between those absolutely absolutely because when you physically feel better your spirits are 
uplifted more easily, mm -hmm. right? The last thing you need to do when you're feeling depressed is eat a bunch of sugar, yeah. right? Because it's actually going to have a, a counter effect that you, you're after. For a moment, it'll make you feel better, but then you're going to crash and you're going to feel worse, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, a box of ding-dongs is not the answer. Mm -hmm. It may seem like it in a moment. So what we want to do is to say, while well, that, that can be the temptation and in the, in the moment that can sound like the best idea, let's do this. Let's substitute, sounds corny, let's substitute a carrot or an apple or something else. If you do an apple that's got a sweetness to it, you're right, that will actually impact your body in an incredibly healthy way. So there's all kinds of nutrients in that one little apple. Well, apple a day keeps the doctor away. It's not just an old wives' tale. There's actually some nutritional support, for, mm -hmm. the science mm -hmm. for that. But just being able to say, let's try this instead. Next time you you're in this place, let's try this instead of what you default to. Let's just try this and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So it's about sure. encouraging them to take control of this and not be controlled by it. But we we I can't even tell you how many people have come in diagnosed with clinical depression on antidepressants and all this stuff. And as we start dealing with the underlying brokenness, of course, getting them connected to who they are in Christ and who God is and what it means to be created in his image and all of those things, as we're addressing their physiology as well, they start to feel better mentally, emotionally, and physically. And so we're dealing with a whole person. I think it's, it borders on malpractice to not from where I sit. Now that might seem like strong language and people, but scripture talks about these things. They correlate these things together all the way through. I think, well, I think it's, it's important for us to do the same. I think it's a little bit of, you know, Kimmy mentioned that there's been, it's been a recent thing where people are starting to think about what ingredients or what's in their food and kind of looking at, or even the impact of antibiotics on your gut flora and needing, you know, doctors now, I was at urgent care and there's a whole sign of like, make sure you have your pre or probiotics, you know, which you would never have seen a decade or so ago. And so, um, yeah. there's definitely, you were ahead of the trend if you've been looking at this for a long time, Warren, because there's this new push, I think, looking more holistically because you're right even even with biblical counseling as your goal if you're not looking holistically you're almost meta you're almost doing what western medicine will sometimes do not to go on a whole tangent apologies but where you're diagnosing the symptom and not the source or the the root cause and so you end up getting on a medication for something that's manifesting as something topical but underneath yeah. there's something more going on yeah exactly yeah. Well, and that's one of the things that I saw happening for many years in the biblical counseling world, what is all Christian Gnosticism. We would focus so much on the spiritual and exalt the spiritual and, and minimize the physical. Right? We wouldn't necessarily demonize it, but we would minimize it like, well, it's not as important. And biblically, both are equally important. God formed Adam out of the dust of the earth and then breathed life into him. Jesus was conceived as a human being and went through the entire human experience. And so he sanctified the whole human experience, which means eating and drinking and having to sleep and all of those things. So when those things get broken down in our life, they're going to affect us. And being able to say, okay, this is missing in my life. Uh, sleep is one of the biggest ones that we see. We have cases, we've seen cases just in the last couple of years, especially, where someone has gone without sleep for three days. So they start to have the psychosis, the hallucinations and stuff. They end up in urgent care. They're diagnosed with schizophrenia and immediately give a medication and they need a nap. They just need a nap. They don't need this medication. So just even addressing, okay, talk to me about what your sleep habits are like. I just don't sleep. Okay, well, that's going to be contributing to this. Let's talk about why you don't sleep, right? Sure. Those types of things. It's just, it's a no-brainer for, for me. But I was absolutely dumbfounded by how many people would nod their head at it, but really didn't understand it, really didn't intentionally incorporate it into 
their counseling practice. Now, like I said, I know some people who do, some people who have, but it's rare. It's common in our program. It's common when people go through our program. You, you can't help it. You cannot get through level one without having this module. And do you think it can sometimes be a cult culturally, like in America, to not rest? Like when you're working with counselees and this, um, I have to keep going, it may be like a misinterpretation of what God's intention was in, in what rest means. Well, even in that, even in work, six days you will work and the seventh you will rest. That's not suggestion language, it's command language. Because he right. knew that our tendency would be to continue to work and work and work. That's why he even built in a Sabbath rest an entire year, every seventh year for the land to rest. Right. So, and think about this. Jesus was the nappiness person in the old Bible, right? This guy loved naps. <laughs> right. I want to be like Jesus. I want my nap, you know. But, but understanding the importance of rest. Jesus is our rest, well, emotionally and spiritually. But also, it's a better, I don't have to strive for these things. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat or what I'm going to wear. I don't have to work myself into the dirt because God knows that I'm worth more than the birds. He provides for them. He provides for me. You see the theology that ties in with this? It's kind of, I'm trying to, I'm like drawing correlations with this to a lot of uh, postpartum stuff. You know, when I was going <laughs> to the exact same thing. That's yeah. The exact same thing. Yep. Yeah. Like you can't give a hundred percent to your newborn or to your, your child, even unless you're taking care of yourself too, but you can often get diagnosed with all these postpartum things, but hello, you're sleep deprived. You're exhausted. You're, you're all of your hormonal levels change. And so it's, there's pro, you know, it, it's uh there's a lot going on and sometimes you need a good nap sometimes you need a good meal you know and, and yes sometimes there's more to it but yeah it's it's easy to think of times where the diagnosis is pretty clear um but there's so much more going on to the person at yeah. that time yeah, absolutely. And I, I absolutely agree because i think i kept thinking about like just knowing different people or even thinking of myself Oh, maybe you have postpartum anxiety and I realized, no, I never slept. Yeah. <laughs> I just had a child who never, you know what I mean? So no, yes. I, I needed to sleep yes. and not, not to minimize any other person's, um, no, totally. everybody's different, you know, their postpartum experience. But I think like not having, there's so much emphasis and education on birth, but not okay, how do you take care of yourself after the birth, knowing that you're going to be giving so much, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you, you can't pour anything out of an empty bucket but dust and rust. Yeah. You've got to be replenishing. And that's just yeah. nature that God created operates. There's an ongoing replenishing that takes place. Yeah, self-care is a real thing. Like, it's important. You know, it's not even that me time, if you want to, like, that whatever that is that fills you back up to use your words right like right. I, you know we have your family demands so much your work demands so much well if everyone's demanding and you're not doing anything for your soul to bring yourself you know some peace and mm -hmm. get god's peace and restoration and feeling your body in the right way you're just burning you're just running on empty and you can only yeah. do that so much we actually uh, a great case study, real life case study, which is a little bit fresh and raw for me is a friend who just passed away last week, who lost his wife a year ago, lost his, his father uh, seven months ago, was went straight into being a single father, couldn't figure out, you know, which happens, how to give himself what the healing he needed and to give himself restoration spiritually and was so stressed and, and got hypertension. And I mean, it was some, some stuff was brewing already, you know, but the stress alone and the hypertension untreated and burning the candle at about both ends, trying to make appearances that everything was okay, led to him having a heart attack last week and pass, passing away at 49, you know, I mean, well, that's you, a, you hit on some things that are really important. Because this idea that driving yourself into the dirt is this everything that you face in life is the equivalent of transporting live organs for transplant. Everything is that critical. It doesn't 
there's this idea that it shows strength of character to run yourself past the point of exhaustion. No, that's foolish. And there's no biblical support for that idea at all. That's a, a cultural thing. It can be a, per, a personal about image. The bottom line is, uh, matter of fact, the CCF conference that's going to be going on after we record this and will have gone on just before we release this is about rest. It's just such a critical thing that it gets left out. So, yeah. But we tie in rest, we tie in movement, but we tie in, you know, what, how do we feed the body? How do we nourish the body? You know, and how do we nurture the body? How do we be good stewards of our body? Because our yeah. body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You think he wants to live in some rundown shack with a busted fence and overgrown lawn? I don't think so. <laughs> we we speak a lot to our kids about that with diet and exercise and why those things are important. It's not because we don't want you to be fat. <laughs> it's not because um, we don't, you know, we don't make it about the physical, what you see externally. It's about being a good steward of the one body God gave you. And in order to be a good steward of that body, we have to fuel it in the proper way and, and, and make sure it's exercised and ready at any time to do God's work, you know, and it's kind of, the, what this class is about as well in, in a lot of ways you talk as well about cellular health and detoxification yeah. um yeah. and kind of what the importance is of detoxifying right and getting some of this junk for lack of a better word yeah. out of the system what is yeah. that look, yeah. is that like yeah. a spiritual detox to detoxification or also physical it's all of it because it's like jesus washes the disciples feet in john 13 and before that Peter says, well, you're not going to wash my feet. And he says, well, you don't let me wash your feet. And you got no part of me. So wash all of me. And Peter, Peter, you're already clean because I've washed you with a word. But it's like, but you still need your feet clean. In other words, you're clean, but you're going to, you're going to collect stuff. You're going to pick stuff up that has to be gotten rid of. So we call that, you know, like a spiritual detox of physical. But we do, we accumulate things. We're influenced by things that are toxic for our hearts, minds, and souls, and our bodies. So being able to, you know, our bodies have a natural detox system to them, but sometimes they can get overloaded. We have chemicals in our food products in America that are against the law to even bring into other countries, okay? And that's a whole nother topic. So to not believe that it would be very easy for our natural detox systems to be overloaded is silly. It's just because um, our systems can only handle so much. And so we talk about, think about how many people you know that have some kind of physical ailment, like almost all the time. But we know that cellular inflammation is a at the root of all degenerative disease. So for helping people understand, you know, the, the, the health, health of your cells, just as a baseline, is an important place to start. Just start doing regular things that give you healthy cells. That will help you fight off the inflammation so that you don't end up sick and diseased. And if you do, you'll end up being able to recover faster. And people say, well, that's, that's medical. No. It's only medical if you look at it through the Western medicine mentality, right? But we're talking about it, it's, it's therapeutic, it's restorative for the whole person. And I'm, we don't expect our counselors to know all this stuff, and, but at least be aware of it. At least know what kinds of questions to ask and, and be able to guide the person you're counseling to do more research. Because talk about probiotics and prebiotics, well, not, they're not all created the same and not everybody needs the same of everything. So we're saying there are ways to you can have this tested to find out where you are, find out what what is recommended for you to supplement your diet with, so that you do have a healthier gut. And so we'll, we'll guide you to that. We'll help you prayerfully consider those things. We're not going to manage it for you, but at least at least we'll guide you to finding the help that you need and bringing awareness. Because just like what you said about detoxification, some people actually don't have the ability to properly detoxify. So they probably need to seek a, a doctor, an integrative doctor, or, you know, a, a Western doctor that has the approach to this to say, hey, you know, you need 
vitamin B12. You need, you need something that will help you detox because some of what you're feeling is you can't naturally detox because of just the composition of how you were born. So yeah, you're not, you're not advocating that, Hey, we take care of everything. We're your doctors, but we bring this awareness, right? That's what we want to do is bring awareness of how the whole person is impacted by everything around you. And that can impact spiritual as well. And well, we've got so many people coming to us that have been prescribed psychotropics. They've got mental health meds, right? Well, the ramifications on their health, physical health are enormous. The, the so-called side effects of a lot of those really impact gut health, which is going to impact, you know, mood and, and those types of things anyway, and overall health. And so it becomes like pushing a flat rock up a mud hill sometimes. They're working and working and working, but they're putting these things, prescribed things into their bodies that are actually counterproductive for them. So helping them be able to say, okay, until I'm at a place where I'm able to get off of these, I need to bring these other things in to help counterbalance the, the teardown that these things are doing. But that's another reason why we talk in our, in, in our training modules about what these psychotropics are and about what the side effects are. So you can understand when you see these symptoms and somebody's, somebody's on a neurotoxin like that, it makes absolute sense why they would be struggling more in these areas. But we have to remember too, that there are also just real health concerns, right? Jinda, you and I know of a case recently where it was pretty clear that this individual was struggling with some pretty intense anxiety but it wasn't primarily mental emotional. It was a mental emotional thing because of their makeup, but it was being driven by methylation issues. We don't talk about that, but th that's a huge correlation. Yeah, the I body's actually recently, ability to, to pull nutrients out of food. Yeah, go ahead. I actually had lunch recently with a colleague who was sharing that um, it took her about 14 or 15 years to finally get the, the right help for her daughter um, because she did not, she wasn't aware that she had methylation issues that were leading to a, a severe um, depletion in, in B12. And when you're when you're depleted in B12, um, you 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 almost go through cycles of depression. Um, and so it was really an interesting conversation because it took so long because she's a She's a doctor of psychology and she has been trying to approach it with behavioral modification and the behavioral modification didn't work for 10, 12 years. And then finally they decided to do labs um, with a doctor to look at kind of a, an integrative doctor to look at all levels. And she cannot believe the turnaround um, in, in her daughter. And I, I was just like reaffirmed. I'm like, yes, there's so much more going on. And yet we try to force this prescription. We force these um, antidepressants on a child who, yes, maybe their, their parent, you know, maybe they that's just the makeup. Like you said, they're a little bit more high, high anxiety. They, they feel more, mm -hmm. but then they have this other, other side that's slightly off not perfect, you know, cause we live in a, in a post fall uh, world. So yeah. we're not, you know, we're going to have brokenness. Um, and she just needed this supplement, you know, thank God her, her mom finally found it, but also sad that they, they struggled for so long. So I, I do think it is a really helpful class to start making you scratch your head a little and think, just a little bit more about what's happening um, inside your body. Yeah. And I like how you go, when you were saying a synergist, synergistic whole, and if we go back to the original of like um, put off, put on, right? How that mm -hmm. all kind of comes together. Like when we were going to put off these lies, we're putting on scripture, we're going to um, put on, let's try eating something healthy, um, maybe go for a walk how it, to learn to balance it all out and how that's, you know, it is God's design. Right. And, in, yeah. in so many cases over the years where I've watched people add one healthy food to their diet a couple times a week. And after a few weeks, we had one more healthy thing. And within a few weeks, we've started enough healthy things that 
their their body is saying, hey, we want more of this. And they lose the desire, their taste buds change, if you will. Their desire for these other things changes. And now their body is saying, no, 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 this is food. We want food. Please give us food. Yeah, it's interesting because I'm go- we're going through a lot right now in our life. And I, because of the stress, we're eating a lot of like quick foods and, you know, not the most healthy, but they're the fat, that they're the easiest, you know, when you've got a family, we've got a family of five now, we're trying to make meals, we're trying to, you know, get everyone fed and get through things. And I feel, I was just feeling, besides the stress going on, I was feeling kind of gross. And I literally thought, okay, every meal, I'm going to start introducing a vegetable. I'm just going to make sure that even in breakfast, every meal, I'm going to have a vegetable. Um, and just a couple of days in, I'm already like, oh, I feel a little bit less I still have a lot going on, but I feel more normal. I feel like, you know, I, I came down just a little <laughs> as well in, in my in my stress. So it's, food is powerful. Food is so important. I created our bodies to be self-healing when we provide them with the nutrients they need to do that. Yeah. And that's why we talk about the difference between, you know, um, what are you feeding your mind? What are you feeding your soul? And what are you feeding your body? Yeah. If you're if you're vegging, you know, um, video games or social media, or TikTok or wherever you get your primary entertainment and education from, you're not feeding your heart, mind, and soul the things that you need from God, the things that will really nourish you as a, one of His image bearers. And the same holds true for our bodies. If everything we eat comes out of a box or hands handed to us through a window that's not food okay well you mentioned the scripture god said i provide for provided everything that you need and you know obviously in today's world we don't live just off of land and that's why we all we eat processed things as well but i think is you know if we can get closer to to the original foods that god provided that helps you know and with that kind of mind we're talking a lot about food like, are you saying that you align with one particular diet or are you, yeah. is there one that you're, you're like, oh, we always do paleo. We always do this. Is that what you're, you advocate in this class? Not at all. Not at all. There are certain diets that consistently have better results for the more people, but none of them are a hundred percent. So it's like, okay, we, we talk through some of the options. You know, we say if you if you want to if you if you want to uh, address this in a way that's fairly easy, fairly simple to start with, you can start with this diet. But it's a starting place. You and God need to prayerfully go through and sort through. You may need far more of this particular food that isn't part of that diet. You may need much less of that this particular food that is a part of that diet. So as a baseline, but we don't promote any particular diet we use diet with a small d right diet is your intake of nutrients and, nu- and, and so but your diet includes your rest and your movement it's not just food so we we often talk about incorporating personal worship time with walking or running or riding a bike or whatever it happens to be time when when you, you're not going to be distracted by a conversation or a project that you have to do. You can really focus on God. Listen to scripture being sung or listen to scripture being read, praying, getting your prayer time in with God at the, at the same time. So you're, you're, you're caring for your body, but you're also caring for your soul and your relationship with God at the same time. There are ways to, to weave those things together and not separate them out. Well, I'm now I'm going to do this and later I'm going to do that. I don't have that much time. I don't. Yeah, well, time and then also, you know, often I've had people I've counseled that, you know, they're going through something and I ask them, okay, well, what have you talked to God about that? Or, you know, how they don't understand how to make God a part of your daily life. And that's that's a prime example. Like when we do homeschooling with our kids and we turn on the music we put on Christian music. Like I want that to be, or classical, but Christian mainly because I want it to be the the subtext to everything that they're doing. Because then before you know it, you're driving in the car and they're they're singing a praise and worship song, you know? And then we're teaching 
my son had to learn a couple memory verses uh, every week. And one of them this week was John three sixteen, And he, st- he started singing the song because there's a song about, you know, it's just like, that's how you bring God into every aspect of your life too. Right. And, and that's, that that's part of the, what yeah. feeds your spirit. And, and that's also, you know, I think we've talked about multiple times before, but that scripture saturation, what we're saturated on the lyrics we're listening to the songs we're listening to all of it, really influences um, us at a much deeper level. Right. Absolutely. So when we talk about whole person ministry, yeah, we've talked a lot about food, primarily because it's not talked about much in this realm, biblical counseling world. But being able to understand that when we're, when we're sitting across from someone and they're talking about the things they struggle with, they're going to be describing mostly struggles of the immaterial part of their makeup, the mental, emotional, and spiritual. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll refer to physical struggles, but a lot of times they won't see the correlation. And if we're aware that every aspect of our makeup impacts the other aspects of our makeup, it can actually help us be a little bit more alert to those things and bring those things into the conversation as well. Yeah, the core of who they are is who they will always be. You have to remember that the final judgment doesn't occur until the material and immaterial part of us are reunited and we step into the rest of eternity as synergistic holes. So that's why, learn, you know, caring for our bodies now is, is, is important um, because it actually helps us in our the sanctification process and growing in our knowledge and understanding of the Lord and our ability to witness. So it says uh, there shouldn't be any fat preachers. Okay. Cause your assumption is that any preacher who's overweight automatically is a glutton. Well, that's not necessarily so because we know that there are neuro neurological and biological things that impact a person where they're not able to not gain weight. They're not able to get rid of weight. Right. But this idea that skinny equals healthy, it's a marketing ploy that has nothing to do. And you will not find a man of God or a woman of God described by how they look. They're described by their character. Mm. You know, their weight and and all of that stuff really is not a factor in whether they're godly or not. We don't find that it's about their character. And the more solid your character, the more that'll overlay in the rest of your life. Mm. And you may be heavy. Okay. That doesn't automatically mean that you breakfast at Dunkin' Donut and you do lunch at McDonald's. It doesn't necessarily mean that. So understanding that if we help people look at what are you, what is your, what is your intake, mental, emotional, and physical, what are you intaking? And what are the effects of those things? And when we look at negative impact, if we're able to say, okay, this correlates with this pretty easily, why don't we take a closer look at that? I'm not going to tell you not to do it. I'm not going to tell you you have to, but I'm a, I'm going to make suggestions for sure. Wow, it's a really it's a really interesting topic um, and and class to introduce into the counseling world, and I, I loved it. I think it's great. Um, are there any any final thoughts that you that you have on on this topic or its importance or two things i don't want people to think that we believe we've got it nobody else does but it, it, i want people to understand that this has been part of our approach for a very long time it's something we take very seriously and it's something that we've gotten pretty good at and i'm grateful to see other organizations other people out there talking about it more but understanding that no matter where you are in your christian experience or your uh, developing your ability to minister the word to people, make sure that you're paying attention to the body and what is going into their body, what's impacting their body, not just their mind, heart, and soul. Because you're not ministering to the person, you're ministering to part of a person. And the other thing I want to remind people is that God is not expecting perfection from us in any of this. He wants us to to have the right heart about it. He wants us to be as faithful as we can. But he also understands that we live in a fallen world. And there's not a demandedness from him that you have to make sure you have 
all of these specific nutrients every day and these probiotics and these prebiotics. It's not like that. Help the people find out what's the wisest approach for me. What's going to help me address the things that I need to address mentally, emotionally, and physically. We keep saying that mentally, emotionally, and physically because that that's that constitutes who we are. So that's why we call it whole person ministry. I would add to it and you can cut this later if you want. <laughs> but um, I I have a heart for children like and you know eventually want to do something more to in this biblical counseling realm to reach children and so I would urge and encourage starting those habits of healthy diets and healthy living at a young age because you know, this, this perspective that, oh, they're young and their metabolisms are so fast, they can eat whatever they want, is it's hard for me to watch at times <laughs> just because it, it is creating habits. And, it, and ultimately, sometimes it's creating health issues. I mean, we have a very, it's not all about weight. And I already said that before, and I don't talk about weight with my kids, but we have a very obese and unhealth population of adolescents. Um, and that's because the convenience of food that are full of chemicals and fat. I mean, you have kids with cardiovascular issues already from artery issues. <laughs> I mean, the diets, you know, so again, it's, it's creating those habits from a very young age so that when they become adults, they're already in these good habits of being a steward of their body and aware of their diet and making room for it. So I would well, just, and the biggest, that. the biggest challenge for people in that is, making the time because you've got to borrow the, the it takes time to invest in doing those healthier yeah. things and making those healthier things available so saying i am going to steal time from this activity or that activity or whatever to ensure that this is this is yeah and i know sometimes we hear that cost is a factor you know eating organic and non-gmo is more price i go to grocery outlet <laughs> you know i don't i can get they have a great or um, organic selection as well. So we're not trying to say you have to break the bank either, you know, but it does, to your point, it takes a little time, like find the stores that have a lot of options. And sometimes on Sundays I have to go to two or three to complete the grocery shopping. Even in that, we, in this module, we talk about the two types of sem sensors in the stomach. We talk about the nutrition sensors and the volume sensors. And if you're eating healthy food, real food, the nutrition se sensors will say, okay, you, you're, you're, you've eaten enough no matter what the volume sensors say. That's why that's, you can eat a whole package of Oreos and still be hungry because the nutritional, so the nutritional sensors have said, no, they say you need to eat more. You don't have enough nutrition. Yeah. So by eating the healthier food, it actually can end up being much cheaper yeah. in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, trust us that this has not covered everything. This class is chock full of content. So it is a course we offer. Um, it's one that we recommend even as additive. I mean, you could just take it for personal enrichment and knowledge as well. So uh, we appreciate all the work you've done now for years building this curriculum and continue to do because as science and information increases, there's more knowledge we have of the human body. And then also the way the world that we live in now with technology is impacting our health and yeah. you know what we need to be aware of so thank you for keeping on top of of all this information yeah. and as always sharing the knowledge with us too warren yes, I, i'm much. always glad to do it uh, and it's an honor to be here as always thank you for listening to the soul care podcast we pray this has been a blessing and an encouragement for you we want to leave you with four thoughts to reflect on. Is your identity in Christ or something else? How well do you understand the true nature and character of God? How much confidence do you have in who God is? And how does all of this impact what you are struggling with today? If you desire to learn more, check out the show notes for more resources and information. And please don't forget, you matter to God.